Hey everyone, so for today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all a bunch of cream shadows that are not necessarily my favorite. I have two entire drawers filled with cream shadows. I do a lot of videos about cream shadows on my channel, but I had realized that I haven't done necessarily a video just rounding up the products and the formulas that don't work for me, and then kind of offering you that alternative. So I'm not going to just be talking you through why these formulas didn't work for me, why I just don't reach for them, but I'm also going to be sharing with you all the products that I think are better, perform better, look better on the skin. And there are a few different trends that I notice within a lot of these cream formulas that I don't like. One, the performance just isn't there. So if they look choppy on the eyes, if they don't want to blend or if they're finicky, that is like number one, I'm not going to reach for it because I love cream shadows because I find them really easy to work with or in my world, they should be. Number two, something that I do find is the case with a lot of these is that they're just not flattering on the eyes. And that's another reason why I reach for cream shadows. Obviously everyone's skin is different. And by the way, if you love any of these products I'm about to talk about, please just keep loving them. I have found that quite a lot of these just don't look flattering on my eyes. Oftentimes they'll make the skin on my eyelids look very textured or they'll kind of just like age my eyes. Because I have so many beautiful cream shadows, I just have found that I get more and more picky. Why would I reach for one that is okay some of the time when I have these standby products that I love every single time I put them on my eyes. For example, let's first talk about a product that I had just like such high hopes for it is a cream shadow from the brand Mina. I love to try and find those hidden gem products, the products that other folks aren't talking about. And really I had seen so many very, very positive reviews on this cream eyeshadow product. And even if you look at it, I'm like, could this be like a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury or the Tom Ford cream eyeshadows? They're definitely a little bit less expensive than those formulas as well. So I just held out so much hope for this cream formula. And I will start with something very positive about this, which is it lasts really, really well. So if you're someone with more oily eyelids and you're not dealing with a lot of dry skin on the eyes, you might actually have a really positive experience with this. Again, everyone's skin is different. So I think that that's a caveat that is important to note. This just looks so dry on my eyes. It actually sets down quite quickly as well. And I do think it gives you enough time to get a pretty good blend, but I just found that every time I put this on, my eyelids just looked drier, looked more sunken, and I'm not reaching for it because of that, especially with a cream shadow like this. I would much rather just reach for other products. Again, because cream products for me, they are there to make the quality of my eyelids look pretty as well. And when a product does not do that, that is like a big no-no for me. Now the product that I would recommend instead is one that I literally just recommended, the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. And the reason why I have to just recommend these instead is that it's just a formula that I know I can depend on. It's a formula that I'm very familiar with and I have recommended to so many people and I've gotten a lot of positive feedback about them. The reason I recommend these over this formula is that these make the quality of your eyelids look beautiful. I have the shade Star Gold on my eyes today. This is a newer shade that I picked up and it's just the same thing every time. It looks beautifully creamy. It has such a gorgeous, gorgeous blend. Oyster Pearl, I think is my favorite cream eyeshadow, period. So if you want a very creamy, blendable eyeshadow that makes the eyelids just have that soft, creamy appearance, that is when I would just recommend these. Or you could even go with the Tom Ford cream color for eyes. If you want something just slightly more long wearing, I find that that's really the only difference between the Tom Ford and the Eyes to Mesmerize is that the Tom Ford is slightly less emollient, slight, slightly, slightly less reflective, but both are incredibly similar. Or if you would like something a little bit more affordable, you could also go with the Velvet Foil Cream Shadow from Almay. This is also a really great option. This shade in the shade Endgame is very similar to 575. I would say right away go with the one from Almay. It's going to set down. 
but you're not going to make the quality of the eyelid skin look drier or look more tired. So yeah, I would say either the Charlotte Tilbury or the Almay would be the way that I would lead you. Next, let's talk about some liquid eyeshadows. You're gonna notice right away that glitter, like liquid glitter shadows, I have a long and difficult relationship with because I do find that liquid glitter shadows can very easily make the eyes look more tired. They can, when they dry down, they can look crackly and they can literally crack off your eyes. Liquid shadows, I think, are very, very difficult to formulate. I would say I think they're even more difficult to formulate than like a traditional creamy potted shadow. That being said, this product from Jones Road was a pretty big disappointment for me. So this is the Sparkle Wash in the shade Midas. All things considered, it's pretty and it's fine, but I just think because I have so many sparkle cream eyeshadows that give me a beautiful, wet, emollient, pretty look to my eyes. When I'm dealing with a liquid shadow like this that just kind of looks a bit dull, I just don't want to reach for it. The formula itself also does not look good unless you have a base under it, which you'll find is really the case with most of these glitter liquid eyeshadows, which is just in general, I think, um, a downside of these kinds of formulas. I can't knock this one in specific for that, but I just find that I can get a similar look, an even better look with a lot of the other like pressed glitter shadows that I have. Though this is more convenient, I just don't think it's worth the money for the look on the eyes. The same thing goes for the Brilliant Eyes from L'Oreal. This is a product that I was holding out a lot of hope for, especially because it's more affordable. I just don't think that this is a glitter cream shadow, liquid shadow that is going to work for people that deal with textural issues on their eyes. Will this last well on the eyes? Yes. But I just think that you do have that kind of trade-off with a product like this. Your eyes aren't going to quite look as hydrated. The skin is not going to look as hydrated. Again, if I haven't made that clear, that's that's really important to me. I have heard many people say that they really enjoy these. But, but something that I just notice over and over again with a lot of these liquid shadows is that they just really don't deliver the sparkle that I'm looking for. I want wet, metallic, gorgeous shine. I personally find myself looking for more. And I do have an entire video on my favorite like glossy looking cream shadows or really eyeshadows in general and I'll leave it linked down below. And by the way, if you guys appreciate that I put a bunch of eyeshadows on my eyes that I don't necessarily like, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It definitely helps me out. So again, both of these just have not worked for me. But but I do have a product that I would recommend instead, and it's the Ulta Beauty Glitter Cream Eyeshadow. And the reason I recommend this over these products is one, it's affordable. And though, again, I still think that this works best with a base shadow under it, I have found that on its own, it still looks pretty. And you're not going to deal with a ton of that choppy glittery look and I do think that when a glitter isn't completely smooth and you can kind of see the areas where the glitter hasn't stuck that I think kind of takes away from the illusion of the glitter and the sparkle that it has. And I do find that this does a really good job of sticking where you want it while also giving a little bit more of that wet looking sparkle. Now it's not still super super wet and glossy looking but it is I think more reflective than these two shadows. Personally, if you're looking for a liquid cream glitter eyeshadow, I think that this one is worth looking into. Now, another liquid cream glitter eyeshadow is this one from Ico. And I don't know how many people know about this, but this is the Galactic Lid Gloss Cream Eyeshadow. I was so excited for this because right in the name, lid gloss is something that really appeals to me. Now, I do think that this looks pretty sometimes, especially if you do have a base to work with, again. But it's just so finicky, and I think that's really where the struggle comes in, is I want my cream eyeshadows to look good every single time. I want to know that the glitters are going to be beautiful and reflective every single time, and I don't have to worry about the blend. And with a product like this, I just find that sometimes it looks good, sometimes it looks kind of choppy, and it just tends to be a more finicky product. Instead of something like this, 
I would personally recommend the Kat Von D Dazzle Sticks. These actually give you a really wet looking sparkle. They're going to last really well on the lids. I have been very, very impressed with this formula. And the shade Flash Storm is absolutely gorgeous. So if you were looking for that kind of galactic with little touches of sparkle and duochrome that are still wearable and pretty, this shade is absolutely gorgeous. I just think this formula is super impressive. It looks wet and pretty on the eye. It's beautiful and this is the one that I would recommend over the one from Ico and really if you are looking for like any of these kind of liquid glitter shadows I would really highly encourage you check out the Dazzle Sticks instead. I think a lot of you will really, really enjoy this product. Another option you could go with are the Janessa Myricks Color Fixes. So this in particular is one of the metallics. This is the shade Ballerina. This shade Ballerina is a beautiful way to go if you want a liquid glitter product. You could also use the shade Milky Way. If you're looking for a liquid glitter shadow that isn't going to chop up on itself, it's not going to look really heavy. I really think that Janessa Myricks has a superior formula. And also, if you're someone with more oily eyelids and you're like, Amanda, I don't want my eyelids to look dry, but I also need my cream eyeshadows to last, I always go back to recommend the color fixes from Janessa Myricks. She pretty much has any color you could ever imagine. The formulas are really, really beautiful. I love, love the shade Celebration. It's still my favorite, but there are plenty of matte shades to choose from as well. So as far as a liquid glitter product, I think Danessa Myricks is also the way to go if you want to stick with a liquid rather than a cream which the KVD Dazzle Stick is more of a cream stick formula. Oh, and by the way, one more product that I also wouldn't recommend is the Maybelline Color Tattoo Eye Chrome. This was an absolute disaster on my eyes. It creased, it looked dry, and in general, just not a flattering product whatsoever. I was very excited for the color because I think this color is really cool. It's the shade Electric Emerald. I would just I would just say go with the potted Maybelline Color Tattoo eyeshadows over these because this was not very flattering on my eyes whatsoever. Now let's talk about some glitter cream eyeshadows. I have two different ones here. This one from Holika Holika, I had gotten a few comments about. I think I never really got around to talking about it. It's one of those glitter cream squishy kind of textures. And I was hoping this would give me a really pretty sparkly look and this just looks so unflattering on my eyes. It could be this shade and I think that's an important distinction really about any of these is that sometimes a formula really varies within the shade that you choose but this shade is just not not flattering at all. This makes the texture in my eyes, it looks like my skin is like flaking. It's very strange. I have worn it a couple of times and just completely forgot about it because my eyes just don't get along with this formula. I just don't look like myself when I have this on. So this is a big pass for me. Just a Sec eyeshadow from Jones Road is a little bit better. I think it's just a touch more finely milled than the Holika Holika. It has a very similar texture though. I would say the Jones Road is a little bit more fluffy if that makes sense it feels a little bit softer on the finger but this was another one of those products that it just looks unflattering on my eyes and the glitters are just not reflective enough and i find too sometimes that it just kind of looks patchy it sticks to some areas doesn't stick to others and in general was just um another kind of disappointment for me there are a lot of glitter cream shadows that you could go with instead of these but one that i just feel like i have to recommend are the ultra glitters from ColourPop. the super shock shadows are a cult favorite for a reason they're affordable the formula is beautiful i think the only downside of ColourPop is that quite often a lot of shades go in and out of stock but but really some of my holy grail cream shadows shadows are the ColourPop Super Shock. So really any of the ultra glitters I think are the way to go. Ritz is my absolute favorite if you love that wet sparkly look. It is gorgeous. It is stunning. When you see it on the eyes compared to these, it's like not even a question. And I think that's something that is really interesting about demos. When I go back to look at demos, sometimes I'll be like, oh, on camera, you know, it doesn't look so bad. But then I, when I compare footage of the products I really love, I'm like, wow, actually, 
Like you can really starkly see that these other shadows are just more flattering, perform better once they're actually applied on the eyes. A little quirky is gorgeous. I absolutely love Cosmic Charge. This is a shade that's a bit difficult to find. I will try again to leave all of these products that I talk about today linked down below. I'm really hoping this one's in stock, but it is just gorgeous, looks absolutely expensive and beautiful on the eyes. I haven't used this one in a while and I definitely want to bring it back out. Very reminiscent of like the Chanel formula. Like this is some really beautiful cream glitter eyeshadows that we're talking about from ColourPop. So personally, I would say skip on these two products go with the ultra glitters, I think you will be happier with how they look on the eyes. And lastly, we have the Glossier Sky Washes. I have really found some beautiful liquid matte shadows that I love. So now when I compare those to these, I just am a little bit let down by these. I think that these shades are still really pretty. This is the shade Terra and Valley. I could still recommend these formulas, though I do think they're a little bit expensive compared to the other formulas that I'm about to talk about. Still, I would say go with those other formulas I'm gonna talk about in a second. But in particular, I wanna talk about these two shades. These are just misses for me. Um, when I pulled them back out, like this shade Lawn, I get it, I get where they were going with it, and maybe they're just expired by now, but it just looks like green pea on the eyes. Yeah, I just don't think it's really super flattering. I think that Pool is a little bit more flattering, but I've basically found the exact same formula, and they are the Wonder Clouds from Rimmel. You get more product with these, they're more affordable, and both shades, Truffle Haze as well as Honey Drop, I think are really pretty. So these are liquid matte eyeshadows that set down to more of a powder finish. So if you are someone that needs your eyeshadow to last longer, if you're dealing with cream textures, but you just need that longevity, this is also a really good way to go. I would say personally, if you have more dry skin, I would go with the matte cream shadows from Ulta. I find that these are like just a holy grail product. I talk about them all the time. I know you guys are probably sick of me talking about them, but if you have not tried them, I highly, highly suggest that you do because I think it's the best liquid shadow formula on the market. Game Over and Vintage Beauty are staples in my collection. I've had these for so long and they are still going strong. They make the eyelids look so smooth. They make your entire look last longer. So I usually add this into the crease to make any other eyeshadow that I put on top that might, you know, typically crease a little bit. I just put this into my crease and then everything looks good for much longer. Because this is more of a cream liquid texture, it has a little bit more slip, a touch more emollients than the Wonder Clouds. I would say if you have more dry skin or lean a little bit dry, these are the ones that I would go for, which by the way, um, I've definitely recommended this product for those of you with oily skin and I have gotten a lot of positive feedback from it, but I just think that this looks a little bit more smoothing on the eyes. If you want a touch more of a powder finish, you could go with the ones from Rimmel. And I find that this formula is basically the Glossier Sky Washes. You get more product, so. All right, everyone, so those were some disappointing pass cream eyeshadows from me, and I hope that the alternatives end up working for you guys. If you appreciated all of the demos, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and I will see you all in my next one.